He is among the greatest Maiar to serve the Dark Lord Morgoth. Taking on a dreadful hue in his servitude, he would be the lord of his kind and would personally kill two High Kings of the Noldor. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the life of Gothmog, the lord of Balrogs. Like all Balrogs, Gothmog was originally one of the great Ainur, created by Eru Iluvatar. It is likely that he, along with all future Balrogs, joined Melkor as he sowed his discord within the music that created the world itself. Tolkien describes the Maiar, like Gothmog, who fell into the service of the Dark Lord in the Silmarillion. Of the Maiar, many were drawn to Melkor's splendor in the days of his greatness and remained in that allegiance down into his darkness and others he corrupted afterwards to his service with lies and treacherous gifts. Dreadful among these spirits were the Valaraukar, the scourges of fire that in Middle-earth were called the Balrogs, demons of terror. In the early days of Arda, these Maiar took on a form of shadow and flame and after Melkor destroys the two lamps, the first source of light for the world, they gather with Melkor in his first fortress of Utumno. During the ensuing Battle of the Powers between Melkor and the Valar, Utumno is destroyed and Melkor captured. The Balrogs, along with Sauron, would hide in the pits of Melkor's secondary fortress of Angband in the Year of the Trees 1099. There, Gothmog and his Balrogs would await the return of their master for nearly 4,000 years. When Morgoth returns to Middle-earth in the Year of the Trees 1495, the great spider-like creature Ungoliant is ready to destroy Morgoth for withholding the Silmarils from her insatiable appetite. Morgoth's cry is heard by his Balrogs, who are still hiding in Angband and they travel to his aid in Lamoth like a tempest of fire. Here we see the Balrogs wield one of their iconic weapons, whips of flame, which they use to destroy Ungoliant's webs and cause her to flee. While the Balrogs are well known to have been Maiar, the same category of being as the wizards, it's interesting to note that Tolkien at one time imagined their origin quite differently. In some of his earliest writings of Middle-earth, collected in the Book of Lost Tales, Gothmog himself is referred to as a son of Melko, the original name of Melkor. It was only later that Tolkien discarded the idea that the Valar would have children and instead made the Balrogs fallen Maiar. Returning to the story, at this point nearing the dawn of the First Age, it's entirely possible and even likely that the elves knew nothing of the Balrogs of Morgoth. Indeed, they knew very little of the Battle of the Powers that occurred in the spring of their existence and had no direct contact with the demons themselves. Their first would come in the Dagor Nuin Giliath, when Feanor's followers arrive in Middle-earth. Arriving via the stolen Teleri ships in the Year of the Trees 1497, they make their way up the Firth of Drengist. They pass into the lands of Hithlam and make camp on the northern shore of Lake Mithrim. There, the elves are attacked. Orcs of Morgoth greatly outnumber the elves, but the Noldor, who are still empowered by the light of Valinor, defeat their foes. In the aftermath of this battle, Feanor in his wrath pursues a small group of surviving orcs across the plains of Ard Galen toward Angband. In this moment, with his enemy upon his doorstep, Morgoth sends out his Balrogs. These demons come forth out of Thangorodrim. Their hearts were of fire, but they were cloaked in darkness and terror went before them. There upon the confines of Dor Daedaloth, the land of Morgoth, Feanor was surrounded with few friends about him. Long he fought on and undismayed, though he was wrapped in fire and wounded with many wounds. But at the last he was smitten to the ground by Gothmog. Lord of Balrogs. There Feanor would have perished had not his sons in that moment come up with force to his aid and the Balrogs left him and departed to Angband. Feanor is mortally wounded and with his death 
Gothmog kills his first High King of the Elves. The Balrogs would next be seen in the Dagor Bragolach in 455 of the First Age. After a period of 400 years, when the Elves lay siege to Angband, Morgoth breaks the siege, sending out rivers of flame as the Iron Mountain spewed fire and fumes. Gothmog and his Balrogs are once again unleashed alongside multitudes of orcs and a fully grown Glaurung, first of the dragons. It is a decisive victory for Morgoth's forces, as many elves are slaughtered in the chaos. Seeing what he believed to be the beginning of the downfall of his people, the High King Fingolfin challenges Morgoth to single combat. While Morgoth would kill Fingolfin in the duel, he would be injured in the foot by the blade of the mighty Elf Lord. From this moment onward, we would see Morgoth stay within his stronghold and instead send his Balrogs, Orcs, and Dragons to fight his battles. The next such battle would be the Nirnaeth Arnoediad, where a great alliance of Elves, Men, and Dwarves seeks to make a final war upon Morgoth. In this battle, Gothmog is referred to as the High Captain of Angband, solidifying his position as one of Morgoth's most important servants. As mentioned earlier, Sauron is also under Morgoth's servitude at this time, but it is Gothmog who leads his armies in war. It seems that Sauron, like his master, takes on commanding roles that don't involve direct combat. Instead, his deeds of the First Age are often using his trickery and sorcery. As for Gothmog and the Nirnaeth, he would come face to face with yet another High King as the battle rages on. But now in the western battle, Fingon and Turgon were assailed by a tide of foes, thrice greater than all the force that was left to them. Gothmog, the Lord of Balrogs, High Captain of Angband, was come, and he drove a dark wedge between the elven hosts, surrounding King Fingon, and thrusting Turgon and Hurin aside towards the Fen of Serek. Then he turned upon Fingon. That was a grim meeting. At last, Fingon stood alone with his guard dead about him, and he fought with Gothmog, until another Balrog came behind and cast a throng of fire about him. Then Gothmog hewed him with his black axe, and a white flame sprang up from the helm of Fingon as it was cloven. Thus fell the High King of the Noldor, and they beat him into the dust with their maces, and his banner, blue and silver, they trod into the mire of his blood. Thus Gothmog kills his second High King of the Noldor. After this feat, we are told Gothmog captures the man Hurin alive by the order of Morgoth, though Hurin would kill 70 orcs and trolls as they attempt the capture. Eventually, Gothmog's troll guards capture Hurin. The Lord of Balrogs drags a bound Hurin back to Angband to deliver to his master. While this account shows Gothmog wielding a black axe, and we know also of their whips of flame and maces, we don't see the Lord of Balrogs wielding another of their weapons, magic. Gandalf mentions that as he was putting a shutting spell on the door to the chamber of Mazarbul, the counter spell was terrible and nearly broke him. While we don't see Gothmog or other First Age Balrogs wield such magic themselves, there is no doubt it was within their power. Now perhaps I'll make a future video on the powers of Balrogs or Maiar in general, but for now let's conclude the story of the Lord of their kind. Gothmog would make one final appearance in the Wars of Beleriand. After the location of Gondolin is betrayed to Morgoth, he once again sends Gothmog to lead his army. This force, comprised of orcs, balrogs, and dragons, would come to the hidden city in 510 of the First Age. Also within the Book of Lost Tales, we find an account of Gothmog leading his force to the northern gate of Gondolin and ordering them to pile their siege equipment against it. The gate breaks from the weight of this mass of iron and the city is breached. Gothmog's army would bring fire and destruction to the great elven kingdom. While not at Gothmog's own hand, the High King Turgon would die in this battle. As for Gothmog himself, he would come face to face with the elf lord Ecthelion. While the result of the story remains the same in later writings, 
The most complete account of the battle comes also from the Book of Lost Tales. Tuar stood then in the way of that beast, but was sundered from Elgamoth, and they pressed him backward even to the center of the square nigh the fountain. There he became weary from the strangling heat and was beaten down by a great demon, even Gothmog, Lord of Balrogs, son of Melko. But lo, Ecthelion, whose face was of the pallor of gray steel and whose shield arm hung limp at his side, strove above him as he fell, and that gnome drove at the demon, yet did not give him his death, getting rather a wound to his sword arm that his weapon left his grasp. Then leapt Ecthelion, lord of the fountain, fairest of the Noldoli, full at Gothmog even as he raised his whip, and his helm that had a spike upon it he drove into that evil breast, and he twined his legs about the foeman's thighs, and the Balrog yelled and fell forward, but those two dropped into the basin of the king's fountain which was very deep. There found that creature his bane, and Ecthelion sank steel-laden into the depths, and so perished the lord of the fountain after fiery battle in cool waters. Thus ends Gothmog, the lord of Balrogs. With him would perish one other Balrog in the fall of Gondolin, this one at the hands of Glorfindel. With two Balrogs killed, it likely leaves at most five Balrogs in the service of Morgoth for the War of Wrath. While Tolkien originally envisioned armies of Balrogs, he later said that three, or at most seven, ever existed. We know for certain only one Balrog to survive the climactic battle of the First Age, the one that would hide in the depths of the Misty Mountains and come to be known as Durin's Bane. While Gothmog, greatest of Balrogs, would perish in the pools of Gondolin, his name would appear once more in Tolkien's works. In the Battle of the Palinor Fields in The Return of the King, we find the second in command behind the Witch King is one named Gothmog. In Peter Jackson's films, this character was depicted as an orc chieftain. However, it's never explicitly stated what kind of being this Gothmog is. Many fans believe him to be an orc or an Uruk, though theories abound. Some say he could be a black Numenorian like the mouth of Sauron, and even more deep cut theory says he was a baldog, which is a fallen Maya that takes the form of an orc. While I personally think an orc or Uruk most likely, I do find it interesting that the Third Age Gothmog could be a fallen Maya like his namesake, though he would be far lesser in power and rank. While the Gothmog of later history would likely be wiped out with nearly all of Sauron's forces at Minas Tirith, Gothmog the Balrog would be remembered in the legendary tales of the elves, and the appearance of Durin's Bane in The Lord of the Rings would give us a mere inkling of the power and ferocity of their Lord Gothmog, the greatest of their kind. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom de Bombadil 19, Listen Me the Cinda, Kella Brimbor, The Mighty Mim, Team Weasel, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Charles Leisure, Toby Mobs Music, CCDC Red Team, Nerd Sigman Anytimer, Pelkey Sports Cards, Mookie the Brown, Christopher Carbaugh, Joe Tepper, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, Grant McGregor, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.